explain, if you're a pastor watching, I want you to listen really hard what this church does and what this pastor, his vision is doing this. Sh share with the folks what you are doing um, in outreach to your community. It just fascinates me. Yeah, I, again, I, I'm so appreciative uh, for the opportunity to be with you this morning. Uh, and I want to thank all those for watching today and those who faithfully support this ministry for years. And, you know, I never take credit for God's work. We give him all the glory. But, you know, we were we were built. I mean, we were founded really on uh, the moving of the Holy Spirit, uh, really a spirit of revival um, and reaching out. And I, I would say, uh, and as you said, Philip, like you're the outreach, you know, reaching out, outreach. What does that look like? Well, we know, uh, you know, the scripture tells us uh, to go and to be, you know, God's given us power to be a witness, Acts 1.8. But for us, um, the gospel comes in many packages. Uh, there's many forms of reaching out. So, yeah, for us, we do uh, a feeding program here on uh, Fridays. Uh, that's right now averaging about 50,000 pounds of, of food in our food distribution. So there's a lot of... Uh, folks that get blessed um, by this undeniable blessing uh, of, of feeding people. And by that, I mean, there's, you know, it's, it's uh, man, it's good stuff. It's, it's meats and fresh produce, a lot of USDA yeah. choice, uh, paper products, toilet paper. You know, who would think in this uh, pandemic back in the <laughs> early on about the toilet paper shortage? Yeah. We had no shortage here. <laughs> so it's, it, it, it kind of goes back to what you said, Philip. You're, your original statement about the church is supposed to be the center of social yes. activity, the center of education, the yes. place where people yes. can yes. put their burdens and, and walk uh, out of the door, uh, you know, freed up. And so um, we've really truly seen God bless um, some of these endeavors uh, through outreach. But I would say that's probably on an ongoing basis, in addition to, of course, witnessing and, and definitely talk about some of those things in a few minutes, like, um, the, the food thing is whether you're Catholic, Baptist or Buddhist, you know, that's an undeniable sure. blessing. There's no strings attached. We don't say, hey, you have to come to our church or, you know, like that. Um, we do offer prayer, um, but it's really people just drive through and they receive uh, the food according to the family size. And, and during this whole COVID thing, you know, since March, uh, not only have we not again, been short on uh, food distribution, but it's actually um, just about doubled in our uh, increase. So just really, uh, you know, blessed to, we always say around here, we're blessed to be a blessing. Absolutely. I, I've watched your videos and, and, and honestly, to watch, I've seen you out there on cold days and, and uh, I mean, lines and lines of cars coming up. And what they're doing is, I, I often, I often ask my pastor friends when I speak to them and and kind of help counsel them sometimes. And I'll say, what does, the, what does the world think when they drive past your church? Mm, wow. Yeah. What is their impression of you when they drive past your church? Have they any, have mm. they any impression at all? Or are you just a dead space in their mind? Or do, you th do they think you're a, you're a crazy bunch of people that are, you know, um, yeah. to tongue talking and, and falling on the floor mm -hmm. kind of stuff? What is the what is the world's impression of you? And if you can create a, a, a means by which the world can get to you, I call it RAMP Ministries, R-A-M-P, Reaching and Mentoring People. And if you can create ramps so that the, mm -hmm. the folk that would drive past your church on a normal day will suddenly think, oh, that's the place that helps folks. That's where I can mm -hmm. go if, I'm, if I need help. Suddenly, you've changed the church from just being a closed box that folk drive past and don't even think about to watching lines of cars being fed. They're thinking, wow, look at those folks. They really must believe what they do. And that's what pastors need to be thinking about in your churches right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, that's so true. And I love that ramp. I had to write that down. That, that's, wow, that is so yeah. really good helpful and it's true i think it's so easy philip um to especially pastoring if we're not careful to lose sight of the vision that god has for his church because it's really 
it's really it's his sure. his church. It's his work, right? And we steward this thing. So, like you know, I think it's if we're not careful, we can get caught up on the inside, you know, maybe drama or issues. I think it was an old Pentecostal preacher that one time said regarding the church. He said, if if they ain't fishing, they're fighting. Huh. <laughs> and uh, huh. it, right. And so, what does that mean? Oh, that's, that's our focus. Truth. Oh, are we focusing only on the inside 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 is it just the believers club like you said is it just a bunch of people talking in tongues and falling on the floor what are they actually doing what what message are we projecting to this community yes the message of the gospel but again that actions speak louder than words i like to say yes and i think when we can start meeting people's tangible needs um they become more open to uh, the spiritual uh, spiritual things, uh, spiritual needs that they have. A lot of people don't. Our our community is a little different here. We're, uh, you know, we're northeast Pennsylvania, Scranton area. We're about two hours from New York City, two hours from Philadelphia. Um, the Pocono Mountains are kind of around the, the rim place, yeah. of, of the valley here. It's a beautiful area. Ski, you know, ski slopes and lakes and all that. Um, but this area, a lot of people have uh, what I would say religion and. Um, they identify by that. That's say, oh, well, I'm, I'm whatever, fill in the blank, you know. But uh, I think where we can find that common ground is when we minister to people's needs. You know, uh, of course, the scripture, right? Jesus says, I, I, you know, you, you know, you were sick. I was sick and you visited me. You know, I was naked. You gave me clothing. I was hungry. You gave me something to eat. And of course, we know where he said, whatever you've done to the least of these, my brethren, you've done to the Lord himself. Yeah. And so I think that um, keeping that in front of the church, like like reaching them uh, with the gospel, the life-changing message of the gospel and the spirit-filled uh, you know, ministry. But again, if we can meet their tangible needs, like you take when this whole, again, thing broke out in March and all of a sudden the whole country is under lockdown. Sure. There became an immediate shortage of everything. The, short, the shelves were bare in many places. There was a limit on how much you could purchase, if you could find it. Um, and yet, honestly, I've never seen in my entire life, and I'm, I'm second generation, you know, and all that uh, Pentecostal and everything, but I've never seen in my life of 55 years an opportunity like we have right now. I agree. Uh, to reach agree. people, right? I mean, it's... Absolutely. So it's just uh, exciting times. Absolutely. Well, I, I'll never forget years ago, years and years ago, um, Joel Osteen's dad, John Osteen, was a, a great friend of our families. And uh, we were speaking at his church one time, and, and uh, at the beginning of the service, they did praise and worship, and then he, all the lights went off in the church. And uh, Brother Osteen had a, a, a drawer in his pulpit, that he pulled his drawer out, and there was a huge map behind him and he flicked on lights and he had assigned the entire church a region of the world to pray for so as he flicked up a, a switch it would come up on the on this the, the world behind him and folk would start praying for that country that they had been assigned to pray for the country and as he flicked through these lights and more lights came up in the world more folk were praying in the church and pretty soon the whole church was just a just a a crescendo of prayer. I stood. I literally. I could hardly speak. And after we done for lunch, and I said, "Brother Osteen, that is the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life." And this is what he said. He said, "I've learned if I can keep people focused on the world, they will not be focused on themselves." Wow! Wow! And let me tell you what you are doing is you are focusing your people on the world and that will go for a peaceful church and anyone anyone that fights in a church that's doing what you guys are doing is a troublemaker and and should be marked as such and as i just i i really felt when i i've been watching you and and i whenever you're you're, you're you come up in my feed I stop and just watch what you do because I love you're building a whole new um, uh, extension on on the side of your building, uh, uh, like a porch for folk to be in, in this kind of weather to be protected. It's just fabulous, and I encourage every pastor, every one of you, if, if you, if, what is your website so they can go and, and look at what you're doing, yeah. and um, yeah. that way. So it's. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, Peck Peckville. 
It's P E C K V I L L E Peckville A G dot org. Peckville and if you just Google dot org. Dot org, yeah. And if they just Google that, uh, you know, Peckville Assembly of God, it'll it'll come right up. As well. Okay. Well, yeah. my, my son's put it on the bar for those watching is on Facebook. Uh, another, uh, it's it's on the information bar behind uh, b- below me, and I encourage every one of you pastors to go and watch, go back <laughs> over this last year and see what this church has done, and and Thank I you. believe that God could use them to inspire you, and I'm sure that, it, that you might want to get in contact with um, Terry and and say, hey man, how do we start this in our church? Because we've got to become, we have got to change. Listen, church. There's no such thing as normal anymore. We're not going back to normal. 